What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this beautiful 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. So technically speaking, the Wilderness is the most expensive Subaru Crosstrek that you can buy. Now this is gonna slightly depend on which option packages you have on your vehicle. Sometimes less optioned versions of the Wilderness will be a little bit cheaper than the limited Crosstrek, but for the most part, most dealerships are gonna have optioned on a lot of these things that we'll talk about that are gonna bring the price of the Wilderness up above the limited. So although it doesn't fit into the lineup, traditionally speaking, the Wilderness badging is kind of a one-off for each of the different vehicles. And while technically it's kind of an outlier as far as the whole, you know, traditional Crosstrek lineup, it technically is part of it now. So we do have to include it. And let me just say, I love the look of the Wilderness. The new Crosstrek for 2024 is a beautiful redesign. I really like what they've done with it. I used to own a 2019 Crosstrek and I absolutely love the new stylings of this updated Crosstrek. And the Wilderness really just takes it up a notch. It's got so many aggressive little decals and badging. And we'll talk about all of it in this video, but I'm super stoked to be checking out this beautiful Alpine green Crosstrek Wilderness here. But let's go ahead, stop wasting time and get started up front with the full set of LED steering responsive headlights here. They have a nice little three-dimensional protrusion that I think gives it a little nice accent that I really like here. Down below, absolutely love these Gatlin gun style LED fog lights right here. Such a unique look, especially at night. This whole front fascia, super molded and aggressive, tons of black plastic cladding. That's a Subaru staple. The cladding here has a little bit more of a texture to it. And then there is some smooth cladding down at the bottom here. Tons of air intake there to cool that engine off. And then you get these really nice copper accents. And you're going to see these throughout the vehicle. But behind here, you have your tow hooks. If you get stuck or you need to pull something, whatever the case may be, then you've got a big old Subaru badge in the center here. Now, one thing that we do not have on the front grille that I really think they should have included on a vehicle that is intended to be taken off road is a front facing camera. Now we see these on some of the higher end Subaru models, not only the wilderness of Editions, but also just regular higher end Subaru models where you can actually see kind of what's in front of your vehicle. Now, is the quality good? Absolutely not. Subaru has some of the worst cameras on the market right now. Don't know why. They need to fix that in upcoming models. But just having that to be able to see kind of what's coming up, kind of see how close you are to the edge of a rock, to the edge of a cliff, whatever the case may be, just to be able to see if you're going to be able to make it over whatever obstacles in front of you, I think is really, really important to have on something that does have the capability to be taken off road. Is it the most capable? No, but obviously you can tell by the way they designed this thing. They're saying you absolutely can. So, and I mean, it's called the wilderness. So, you know, put a front facing camera there so you can see the wilderness in front of you. You know what I mean? And you all can probably just tell by the stance of this angle right here, but this thing has so much ground clearance, 9.3 inches of ground clearance here on the Subaru wilderness. That's up from the traditional 8.7 inches of ground clearance that you have on all Subaru SUVs, but so much space here. And this ground clearance here absolutely blows similar type of vehicles out out of the water, the kind of off-road compact crossover segment, something like the Jeep Compass Trailhawk that has about 8.6 inches of ground clearance. That's less than the standard Crosstrek. So this blows it out of the water. And then even something like the Ford Bronco, I think it's called the Badlands, that only has about 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance. So again, the Wilderness absolutely destroys it with its 9.3 inches of ground clearance. Absolutely killer. And if you notice here on the hood, you've got a nice matte black hood decal. This has a couple purpose. One, it just looks cool. Two, it's to help with glare from the sun off of the hood. So that's gonna soak up some of that reflection, but it does just give it a nice sporty look. Under the hood of every single Crosstrek Wilderness, you're gonna have the same 2.5 liter boxer engine. That's gonna give you 182 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque, 29 miles per gallon highway, 25 miles per gallon city. You'll notice this extra beefy cladding up around the wheel well. That's gonna help protect your paint. If you do wanna take this thing off-road, which, you know, obviously is its intended purpose, not everyone's gonna do that. Some people are just gonna buy it because it looks Looks nice but for those that do want to take it off road that's going to give it some extra protection here you also have these really really nice 17 inch matte black alloy wheels they look absolutely fantastic and they're wrapped in these gigantic yokohama geolander tires which look absolutely killer, super mean. They have all kinds of texturing on the sides, real thick tires, as you could probably tell here. The only thing I wish they'd done differently was make these bolts here matte black as well. That'd look really nice, but I'm sure you can switch those out yourself. You do also have splash guards here on the back. And then 
if we move on back, you'll see how high up the cladding goes here on the door panels. Now, under traditional Crosstrek models, the skirt is just going to run along here and just give you a tiny bit of cladding. I'll give you some clips here on screen of when we reviewed the Crosstrek Limited, but here on the Wilderness, you get all of this extra bolstered cladding that goes all the way up the door panels here. Helps if you do want to take this off-roading. Tall grass, sticks, rocks, things like that. Keep it nice and protected. Then you do have this really nice copper Crosstrek word mark here. I think that looks really nice. And then this Subaru Wilderness badge right here, which I'll talk about a little bit in the back, but I really, really like this badge. You've got matte black mirror caps here, integrated turn signals. They're heated, have blind spot monitoring. They're auto dimming as well, but they are manual folding mirrors. Now, all of these cross tracks are going to have Subaru's advanced eyesight driver assist system. So that's up here. Plenty of cameras, plenty of safety features. Now, past the eyesight cameras, you do have a pretty small little sunroof there. Just a tilting and sliding moonroof. Nothing crazy. And then you'll see you have these ladder style raised roof rails here with a little copper accents that look fantastic. These can support 700 pounds of static load. So you can really put something strong and beefy up here like a tent or something like that. But back down here on the door panels, you've got keyless access right here on the side. You can put your hand inside, open it up. Then you have little lines here you can put your finger on and it will lock right up for you. And then more of that bolstered cladding kind of dips down here and then pops right back up on the side of this door panel. I think they should put this on all cars. This would help so much with door dings. One more little note back here on the gas cap for 2024, something they changed on all of the cross tracks is that when the vehicle is locked, you actually can't open the gas cap. But if you go ahead and unlock the car, then when you push the gas cap, it pops right open and you can get access to it. Just a little extra bonus feature they threw in. So moving back here to the tailgate, there is so much going on. Let's just get into it. You've got a little body colored spoiler up top to help keep some stuff from the top of your windshield, but you'll notice that the windshield protrudes out pretty far. That's why they gave you this wiper to help clear that off if need be. You've got these matte black kind of pillars on the side, which is a nice contrast piece. Nice big claw shaped tail lights here that kind of wrap around the side of the vehicle too. These look really, really nice and they have kind of a black wrapper around them that adds some extra contrast. Now I talked about the badging here and typically speaking, I think Subaru puts way, way, way too many badges on their vehicles and it becomes cluttered and distracting. I don't really feel that way about the Wilderness back here. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the Wilderness badge is so good looking. I forgive it for being on there, being everywhere. They should put 50 more of them on the vehicle. It looks so good. Subaru badge here beautiful wilderness badge. And then they did do cross trek and symmetrical all wheel drive badging, but it's in this powder coated kind of black look. And I think it's really clean. It's really contrasty and it kind of hides away while still, you know, being there. So I don't mind this at all. If this was all silver, I'd probably care more. But back here, I think it looks pretty nice. You do have a rear view camera up underneath. You have a little bumper applique that has some kind of topographical designs on it. You've got some parking sensors here and then more of this black plastic cladding here around your reflectors and then more of those copper tow hook accents. And then a big Subaru print word mark here on the back of this plastic here and then a really nice clean diffuser as well. But if we go ahead and open her up, you can see that you get a little bit more of a bumper applique thing here on the inside lip as well that has a tiny little cross track on it. See that you've got all weather mats back here that have a really cool design on them. And then you have this gigantic trunk mat that has the Subaru Wilderness logo on it as well and more, you know, topographical accents. It looks killer. Absolutely love it. Up underneath here, you're going to get a full size spare tire and all of your tools. You've got room for a cargo net. You've got a cargo shade right here as well. You've got some little lights on the inside. You've got an LED light right here on the doors. You can see easily at night. You got more of a cool little Subaru accented textured piece here, which I'll give you a little shot of so you can see some room on the sides for different things. You've got so much cargo space back here, 20 cubic feet with the rear seats up. If you fold those down, you get 55 cubic feet of cargo space back here. So plenty of storage space for anything you could possibly need. The only downside back here is you do not have a power lift gate. You know, that's gonna bother some people. Others won't care, but that's pretty much everything back back here. Let's hop inside. All right, so hopping inside the cabin here, let's just take a look at everything that we've got going on. Now, I've reviewed so many Subaru models, and I kind of have the same complaint about all of them. The cabins, while perfectly functional, are just a little on the boring side. Unless you go real high up outback cabins, where you've got like the beautiful like three-tone door panels with the Java brown and ivory accents and things, at that point, you're like, all right, this looks nice. But here in the kind of lower end Subaru models, everything's just kind of samey. And I don't 
don't know. There's just something about it that I'm sure fully practical, rugged, you want all that for, you know, an off-road. But if you're buying this thing just for the look of the off-road, but you want like kind of a more premium feel, you're just not really going to get it. Just a little forewarning there if you are looking into it. And again, I'll talk about all the materials here. This is kind of a hard touch plastic basically there's leather here or a leatherette material on the door panels with some accent stitching then you have kind of this textury matte faux carbon fiber look to it more black plastic and then all the way down it's just black plastic hard touch plastic up top here a little bit of a textured gray area over the glove box and then more of that faux carbon fiber and then everything from knees down is going to just be just clacky black plastic. You do get a little more of that fake carbon fiber accent that runs across the dash here. You do get a nice leather wrapped steering wheel here, which is a nice touch, some copper accent stitching and then a little copper accent at the bottom of the steering wheel. That is really the only significant pop of color that you have here in the cabin. You get a tiny little bit of accent stitching on the leather wrapped shift knob here and then a little bit on the center armrest here. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty samey. Like I said, just a lot of black plastics, maybe some little gray hints here and there, but it's all like black gray combo. Again, probably best for if you're going to be using this in kind of a more rugged type of way. We'll talk about that when we talk about the seating surfaces as well. If you want something that's super flashy to look at, this is not the cabin for you. And also, since you have this large touch screen now, you have very few physical controls. Over here, you just have a single brightness dial for your little driver information cluster. You've got automatic windows for driver and passenger. That's pretty much all of the buttons over here. You can adjust your mirrors here. Nothing crazy there. Lights, wipers behind the steering wheel. You've got your paddle shifters for your manual mode. You've got media controls on the left side of the steering wheel and then you've got your adaptive cruise control with lane centering and your si drive buttons on the right side of the steering wheel subaru badge in the center like i said past the steering wheel you have your standard subaru setup two analog gauges and a little tiny probably like four inch driver information cluster this just lets you see kind of what gear you're in you know your adaptive cruise systems trip calculator things like that it does kind of flash a little animation of the subaru wilderness badge which is a nice little touch they threw in behind the steering wheel here you do have your push to start button i don't really love the placement of this it's hard to see trip reset button that's really the only other buttons that you have on this area now you have a couple physical buttons to interact with your 11.6 inch infotainment system volume button tuning knob you got your hazards here a couple vents defoggers for front and rear and then you've got buttons to increase and decrease your temperature on the sides here as well she enabled wireless charging pad down below this can be turned on or off which is a really nice feature i talk about that in my secret features video on the cross trek if you haven't seen that check the link in the description then you've got a 3.5 millimeter aux jack here a usb-c port and a usb-a port right above your charging pad then you have your linear tronic cvt shift knob here it is a leather wrap shift knob a little bit of an accent at the bottom with some accent stitching as well electronic parking brake and then you do have heated seats for driver and passenger and a 12 volt outlet back here as well two cup holders which i'm taking advantage of and then inside you do have these little pucks that have little mountain accents on them which is a nice touch little pocket back here and then under the armrest no additional ports but you do get a nice deep pocket with this leather wrap wrapped armrest with accent stitching as well now as far as seating surfaces again these are kind of off-road oriented rugged seating surfaces they're still pretty comfortable though i have to say but these are the subaru startex weather repellent seating surfaces they have these cool hexagonal shapes down the center of them but they're nice rugged kind of a two-tone look with this black and gray accents you've got your big subaru wilderness badge in the center of the headrest there and then a little bit of that copper accent stitching as well again Decently comfortable, not the most comfortable Subaru seats I've ever sat in. Pretty comfortable, and again, super rugged and weather repellent as well. The driver is a 10-way power adjustable seat with lumbar support on this specific model because we have optioned on a package that includes that higher end, you know, 10-way power adjustable seat. If you were to get the lower trim, you might not have that. You might just have, you know, six-way, eight-way power adjustable seat, but this one has that 10-way with the lumbar support passenger seat is just a manually adjustable seat but again heated for driver and passenger now really the eye-catching piece is here in the center this giant 11.6 inch driver information display this is subaru's most up-to-date system it's got radio bluetooth apple carplay android auto you can connect your my subaru app to it obviously you can see your backup camera it also will give you on-screen climate controls for your dual zone climate control system so individually adjustable driver and passenger and you can sync them you can enable your x mode and turning off things like auto vehicle hold auto start stop engine vehicle dynamics control all of that's done through this touchscreen. you don't have the physical buttons it's all through here some people are going to love that some people are going to hate it it is what it is guys you can fight it as much as you want but when the companies decide that they're going to go software buttons instead of physical buttons nothing really you can do about it other than you know get a different car
but I cover all of the in-depth stuff about this system in my secret features video. So again, definitely check that out down in the description. But if we move on up here, you've got a nice chunky auto dimming rear view mirror with universal home light garage door controls and a compass built into it. This thing is awesome. Gives you so much visibility out the back windshield. And then you've got your eyesight cameras up here, some LED dome lights and controls for tilting and sliding your moon roof here. I really like the black headliner up here as well. That gives it a nice cabin feel. Also, you do have your Harman Kardon premium audio system down here. Again, that's an option that we added onto this vehicle. So like I mentioned, there's some wilderness models that will be a little bit cheaper than this one, but the reason is we added the option package 23. That's a $2,270 option, and it comes with that 10-way power adjustable seat with two-way lumbar, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, the Harman Kardon speaker system that I just mentioned, and then also this power moonroof. So those three things alone are going to cost you an additional $2,270. So kind of have to weigh that, see if that's worth it to you, but the Harman Kardon speaker system does sound really nice and you know having a moonroof is nice as well all right hopping back here to the back seats they're compact right this is a compact suv so i've got a tiny bit of leg room this seat could probably stand to be moved up a tiny bit for my 6-1 driving position. So I'd probably maybe get like an inch to two inches of rear leg room. This is probably like half an inch so far. But the back seat kind of curves up right here. So it does give you a little bit extra of that leg room. Headroom's pretty good. There's a nice hump in the roof here to give you that extra headroom. You know, you got hooks and handles here. As far as the door materials go, really, really, really on the low end side. Just plastic all the way down. Plastic door handles, plastic here, plastic here plastic here. You do have a little bit of a leatherette accent on the door handle with some accent stitching. So nice little touch there. But other than that, pretty cheap as far as the door panels go. No vents back here, but you do have one USB-C port and one USB-A port and one map pocket on the back of the passenger seat. Some lights back here. Again, that black headliner. And then you have that same kind of StarTex weather repellent seating surface on the back as well. If you need your dog back here, no issues there. It'll keep hair and mud and things from staining the seats too much. You can clean that off real easily. Then you do have this center armrest that folds down. It gives you two cup holders and a nice armrest. Two adults back here really should be fine. Three kids you could make work, although the transmission hump is a little bit large here but i think you could make three kids work okay three adults is going to be super super cramped back here and even two adults is going to be cramped as far as legroom goes for long trips but shoulder and kind of passenger volume isn't that bad and if you do need to access that ladder style roof rail they give you a nice little step here that has a little mountain accent on it so you can get a nice firm spot to put your foot to climb up and access that roof rack all right, let's take the Crosstrek here for a little test drive. So we'll start her up. So I've reviewed a lot of Subaru models and I've reviewed a lot of Crosstreks. And I think what I notice most is that ground clearance. You just feel like you're riding tall. And even with the seat all the way down, it's really, really tall. Like I feel like I'm almost hitting my head on the roof line. You know, it's an optical illusion. So you can raise your seat all the way up. <laughs> Look at how high you can sit. Oh my god. My head is on the roof. You can sit very high up. Not that you would ever want to do that, but you can. You feel like you ride really tall no matter what position you're sitting in. Obviously, that was an extreme exaggeration, but you just feel like you're riding up really, really high. And, you know, for good reason, you are. But I always talk about visibility in Subarus. It is really great in almost every Subaru model. This is the first one where I've been like, something's off. And it took me a while to figure out what exactly it was. And I think it's this section right here. So visibility out the side is great. You've got a pocket window, but it's nice and big. You don't have really any bad blind spots. A pillars moderately sized, so not that big a deal. But this rear view mirror is massive and that's great. I love that. But the whole eyesight area has gotten much bigger and wider. The mirror being as big as it is, just this entire area, it's like in your periphery all the time. It feels like the front glass is more cluttered up than it actually is. It really has been throwing me off as I've been driving it around. And it's something I've never noticed until now. So I don't know if it's a combination of the smaller front glass on the Crosstrek or if it's the larger eyesight area or what it is, but there's just something about it where the visibility out the front just feels blocked because of this larger area here. So just something to keep in mind. The visibility is still great, but just as a little note in case you guys are driving this around and you feel like, I feel like there's something in my blind spot or feel like there's something just right in my peripheral. It's probably this whole area here that just makes it feel a little bit cluttered. But while we're on this, more city side streets. Let's get a DB rating here inside the wilderness cabin.
So right around 63, 64 dB on city streets, around 45 miles an hour. But let's uh, talk a little bit just about the handling of it. It feels a little weird. It's been a while since I drove the Crosstrek, so it feels a little swimmy to me. I'm used to driving SUVs. I've been driving a car as my daily driver like a sedan for the last month. And maybe I'm just so used to that, like it's super connected to the road. This feels a little bit more swimmy, so that's interesting. Let's get some acceleration here. <laughs> it's just so bad. It's so bad, man. It hurts me to the core. It like stabs me directly in the heart. I'm one of the biggest Crosstrek fans that you'll come across, and it just kills me that they have such underpowered engines in these things. It's so sad. I would give anything if Subaru would put the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine from the WRX into the Crosstrek Wilderness or the Crosstrek Sport or something, or give it a different trim, make it a higher end trim. Give me the 2.4 liter, please. With that 200 and what, 71 horsepower, whatever, this thing would be a freaking blast with that engine. Right now, you must, like you absolutely have to get the 2.5 liter if you're gonna get a Crosstrek right now anyway. Do not get the two liter, the 150 horsepower, don't get that one. Get the 2.5 liter for sure. It's the only thing that makes it even a little bit bearable with that 30 extra horsepower, but even then, it's just not fast. Again, know your audience, doesn't need to be fast, but in something that's like off-road and like performance and all this kind of stuff, like it'd be great to have something that felt a little bit more sporty or a little bit more aggressive in this wilderness trim or the sport trim to have something be a little bit more aggressive. It's just not. Let's get a highway DB reading here. So we're at around 71, 73 when accelerating, and we can try our adaptive cruise as well while we're here. Turn the lane centering on as well. So I'm going hands-free here. Probably gonna bark at me. But it's doing a good job. Yep. Let's see how well it does keeping me on this curve here. Slowing me down, slowing me way down, nice. I'm gonna be making a video here pretty soon where I'm gonna be comparing the kind of like driver assistance features, the semi-autonomous features that a lot of these more accessible legacy brands have. So the ones that we have on our dealership, we have Subaru, Volkswagen, Chevy, Hyundai, and CDJR. And I'm gonna be comparing all of their different assist systems. And Subaru's is fine. It doesn't blow you away. You know, it works pretty well for its intended purpose, which is just, you know, mainly like highway traveling with the adaptive cruise and then keeping you in the center of a highway lane, which more or less is going to be like straight with slight bends here and there. It doesn't do anything crazy. Like it's not going to take you around very tight turns. It does its job. And you know, for that, I appreciate it. And it's nice to have it here on the wilderness. And obviously this car was designed to be able to take it off road onto trails and over rocks and things like that. I'm obviously not going to do that because this is going to be somebody's brand new car very soon. And I don't want to risk damaging any of it in any way. So I'm not going to do that. From everything that I've read and everything that I've seen, this thing is very capable. It's not, you know, uh, Jeep Wrangler capable, but you know, that 9.3 inches of ground clearance, it makes a big difference. But as far as everything else in the cabin, I pretty much already mentioned it, but like this cabin is not flashy, but I don't think that's what you're getting it for. I think you're getting it for it being rugged. That's why you've got these StarTech seating surfaces that are weather repellent. So you've got, you know, plastics everywhere that won't be too easily damaged, will hold up pretty well to kind of moderate abuse if you're taking it off road and things like that. So I think that they nailed the target demographic there, but it's just kind of meh and I don't really know what they could do to fix it and I don't know what want them to do to fix it necessarily but it's just one of those things you get with a lower price point point. and then one more thing I wanted to mention about the interior is this infotainment display I know it seems like I cannot get on here and talk about a Subaru without talking about how bad this infotainment display is but it really is terrible you guys have probably seen when I've been showing clips of me using the infotainment display how laggy it is and how stuttery like switching between it I mean just I just did it just there and it takes like the whole screen goes like this it reminds me of displays from like 20 11, 2012. The only thing good about it is its size, right? It doesn't do anything better than the previous Subaru display does. In fact, a lot of things I feel like have gotten worse and that rear view camera quality is so terrible. It's almost like you don't have one. I complained about them not putting a front facing camera, but at the same time, would I want a front facing camera if it's gonna be that bad of quality? I don't know, but I think on more of an off-road centric vehicle, you probably need to have a front facing camera, but again, this one doesn't have it. But Subaru really needs to clean that up. So let me give you guys three things I 
love and three things that I hate about the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. And then I'll talk about if you should actually buy this trim. So the three things that I love, first and foremost, I love the design of the exterior. Crosstreks in general have always looked great to me. The Wilderness is no exception. The updated Crosstrek lineup is no exception. This thing is absolutely killer. I love the design. I love this alpine green color with the copper accents and the contrasted cladding. It looks absolutely top notch. I'm a huge fan of that. Secondly, I love the cargo volume on this thing. You get 20 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats up, which is plenty. And you still get that SUV style opening so you can fit larger objects in. It's not like getting 20 cubic feet on a sedan, right? Where you have to fit it in that tinier opening. You get the full SUV style opening while still getting 20 cubic feet with your second row seats up. Fold those down 55 cubic feet. Plenty of cargo space for anything you could possibly need. I used to daily a 2019 Crosstrek and I'd be able to load every piece of gear I had in that thing, including really long C stands and all this kind of stuff. I never had any issues. The cargo space is great and the vehicle is still pretty compact and like nimble for having as much cargo space as it has. So that's a great feature. And then thirdly, I really do like the EyeSight Driver Assist system. It's a great suite of safety features and to get it standard on every single Crosstrek, regardless of how much money you pay, it shows that Subaru prioritizes safety. And I really, really appreciate that about the company. Now let's talk about three things that I really hate. First and foremost, I already talked about it, this infotainment display. I think it's almost like a trick with how it portrays as this big, beautiful display. And while it is big and beautiful, it just sucks to use, it just straight up sucks to use. I really want them to fix it. I don't know what they gotta do. I don't know if they need better processor in there. I don't know if they need a more responsive touchscreen, higher refresh rate touchscreen. I don't know what they need to do, but they need to fix it and I would love to see a mid-cycle refresh where they fixed this display because it's just abysmal to use and it's disappointing because there's a lot of great functionality in this screen it just isn't fun to use. Two, it has to be that underpowered 2.5 liter. You would think with something that's relatively beefy, all things considered. I mean, a lot of the engines we have now are like 1.4 liters, 1.5 liters, 2.0 liters. You have a lot of these smaller engines. You don't have a lot of these big V6s or V8s anymore. Everything's kind of condensed down because you can get the same kind of power and torque out of these lower powered engines these days. But this one just isn't great, unfortunately. And it makes the pretty lethargic Crosstrek a little bit less lethargic than the 2.0 liter. But still, 182 horsepower just doesn't cut it. And I'd love to see them bring a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, which Subaru already has to the Crosstrek. I think that would be absolutely killer. And then finally, these seats. This is kind of a pro and a con. While I do find the StarTex material comfortable to sit on, I think the overall just bolstering of these seats is just not my favorite. They're a little bit stiff, a little bit uncomfortable for long periods of time. They don't have any perforations for cooling or anything like that, which I get why they don't because they're more rugged. You don't want stuff getting into those perforations. That makes sense to me. There's just a lot of sweat buildup on the back. Uh, without that kind of airflow through the seats. So I find myself kind of sticking to them a little bit, just not that comfortable. I don't know what you really fixed about that. Maybe add a little bit more bolstering, but you can increase the lumbar support. So you can at least do that, make it a little bit more comfortable. Seats, just not my favorite. Uh, let's get a DB reading at idle real quick. right around 44, 45 dBs at idle. So should you buy the Wilderness Crosstrek? There's so many options when it comes to the Crosstrek. You've got premium options that add all kinds of different packages. You've got the Limited, you've got the Sport, you've got the Wilderness. I mean, there's so many different options. So which one is the right one for you? I think it completely depends on what your use case is, right? If you just want the best possible driving experience, definitely get one that at least has the 2.5 liter. So get the Sport, get the Limited, get the Wilderness. If you want something that is a little bit off-road capable, you know, you're gonna have to shell out a little bit for the Wilderness with that 9.3 inches of ground clearance, the large tires, ladder style roof rails with the large static load capacity, you know, some of the more um, bolstered cladding, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna have to shell out a little bit for that. I think the best bang for your buck is probably still gonna be the Sport or the Limited. Although, like I said, those fringe use cases, when you do wanna take this more, you know, off-road or at least, you know, into light trails and things like that, you're gonna have to go with the Wilderness. But still, all things considered, $37,000 for something that's this feature packed as far as kind of off-road amenities go that has this more rugged style, has the, you know, all-weather seats, has a leather-wrapped steering wheel with the different drive modes and the adaptive cruise with the lane centering, the big technology package. It's a pretty good deal, all things considered. So again, it's solely going to depend on your use case, but I think if it were me and I was buying another Crosstrek, I would probably get a Limited or a Sport, but I would make sure that I get one 
one that has the 2.5 liter minimum. Please super give me the 2.4 liter turbo inside the Crosstrek. I'll do anything. Please let me just try it once. But I absolutely love the Wilderness. So if you are going to be picking up one of these Wilderness, you cannot go wrong. There's so many great color options. Orange color, that's really nice. There's this Alpine green color. There's the kind of traditional blue color that you see on all of these Wilderness. You cannot go wrong with any of the color combinations. They all look awesome. So definitely go test drive one, check it out, and let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Drop a like in the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, what do you think about this beautiful Alpine green Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness? Let's talk about it down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.